I've known Rafi Lamb since university days. I've known Rafi for 25 years and Mark Landau for 15 years. So I had a great respect for both Mark and Rafi in terms of not just the quality of the people, but also their, their skill set. So I knew the people well. And importantly, you know, I could see a very significant market opportunity. In Australia, a $4.3 trillion market, there's less than $1.5 billion of um, of capital that is focused on activist investing. And Rafi, Mark and myself thought with the combination of the three of us and their stock picking capability combined with my um, you know, experience of two decades of being an investment banker and originally an, an M&A lawyer, uh, we thought that was a unique um, combination of skills to really um, you know, focus on unlocking latent value in, in Australian companies. The Catalyst Fund is very much a best ideas high conviction fund with an activist overlay. So the way that will operate in practice is the fact that the Australian equities team of L1 already does their deep dive analysis and, and, and assesses companies on a value and a quality basis. And then the Catalyst team will assess the Catalyst overlay the, and the ability to influence an outcome by virtue of our, our activist approach. So it's very much about enacting and accelerating the catalyst which will bring forward returns for our investors. Well, in terms of broad parameters, the fund can hold up to 10 stocks. They can be um, Australian listed companies or overseas listed companies. The, the latter provides us with some optionality. They, um, you know, we, we not, we're very clear on where our competitive edge is, and that is in the Australian marketplace. So we're very focused on this market. Um, we, but so when we go offshore, it'll be the exception rather than the rule. In terms of the diversification, we very much um, take account of the type of stocks we have within our 10 stock portfolio. So different um, companies, different sectors, different um, leverage, growth characteristics, etc. But at the end of the day, we think a high conviction concentrated strategy. If you're having more than 10 stocks in the portfolio, you're starting to dilute the whole basis upon and thesis upon which you're investing with that you have a really high conviction in a number of um, stocks. So the way we think about the activist approach is first and foremost, it's a best ideas high conviction fund with an activist overlay. So in terms of what does activism mean, it really, is across the spectrum. I describe it as from capital A activism at one end of the spectrum, all the way down to lowercase a activism at the other end of the spectrum. And when people think and investors think of activism, they typically think of capital A activism, a big demerger, you know, a, a, a big sale of a part of the business, a sort of whiz bang type activism. Whereas they don't think about the lowercase a activism, which might be um, you know, increasing the quantum of a, a share buyback from 5% to 10% because of the EPS accretion that that enhanced uh, buyback size and scale will, will result in. They don't think about the deployment of capital into a higher returning part of the business um, for a company and encouraging companies to go down that route. So there is a big spectrum of, of activism. And of course, there's also a public and private activism. And we fully expect that in eight or so out of 10 of our investments and our activist approach will never be heard of publicly because we'll be working very constructively with the board. It's only in those rare cases where um, they become public that the people actually hear about the act activism. And that's typically why people only think of the capital A public initiatives as what constitutes activism. So in terms of ESG, we are very much ESG aware. We consider the E, the S and the G whenever we consider any investment for the Catalyst Fund. Uh, we, we think where we all have a particular focus and add value is in respect to the G, the governance. Um, I think it's fair to say that when a lot of other ESG focused funds focus on the ESG, it's on the E or the S. Uh, we actually think the G is something that can materially um, enhance shareholder returns over the medium to long term and having a real focus on that. Um, that being said, there's also clearly um, a heightened focus on ESG from particularly you know, younger investors. And I think there's a lot of uh, examples offshore of you know, there being activist funds that are purely ESG focused. And the recent example of Engine Number 1 investing in ExxonMobil and uh, 
actually getting three directors um, appointed to the board was very illustrative of the impact that a very small investor on the register can can have if they have a you know if they can really corral the opinions and votes of other large institutional shareholders. We actually think the Australian market is a very conducive market to being an activist investor because, because it's a small market, through Rafi, Mark, myself and the team members' relationships, you know, we have you know, connectivity to most Australian corporates. We know the, the regulatory framework, we know the, the key players, we know the media. So actually having that, um, that knowledge and connectivity we think is advantageous. That being said, we of course need to be very respectful of the fact that Australia is a small marketplace and uh, we need to have regard to the fact that there's a lot of overlap of directors and that will very much influence the way we go about our engagement with companies.